Hello everyone, welcome to the SI UK India webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. We are now live with Dharam University. Today we have Peter with us. He will be taking us through this webinar. We'll try to answer all the questions after the presentation during the Q&A session. So let's start the webinar. Over to you, Peter. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So, if I share my screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about our um, postgraduate taught program um, <clears throat> or the, the, the offerings we have for our postgraduate uh, program. And in that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we the, the programs we offer and then sort of how we how we run those programs. So what what you you would um, effectively experience as a student from within the engineering department. Um, we'll then follow up with some live um, from Durham, from, from Captain Paxton, and then a little bit more about um, getting into Durham as well from Pooja Nalawadi. Okay, so. The programs we offer, um, we have five programs that we offer fully within the engineering department. Um, so that's taught MSCs in civil, electronics, electrical, renewable energy, and mechanical. Um, we also have two programs that we um, offer in um, collaboration with other departments. So that is the Ener Energy and Engineering, Engineering Management um, with the Business School and the Biomedical MSc in collaboration with uh, Biosciences. Um, I'm going to focus primarily on the top five. Um, the um, ones in collaboration have a similar feel to them, but there are a couple of, of differences in, in some of the some of the detailed aspects. So, for example, the en energy engineering management course has a different project. Um, it has a lot more business facing elements that um, are done by the business school, which I'll be quite honest, I don't have enough uh, understanding of to properly tell you. So, starting with. Um, what the overall um, workload looks like. Um, so the the MSCs, the, the work involved with the MSCs are divided into three main um, categories and three main blocks. Um, the first one um, I want to mention is actually the one here in the middle, which is the top module. So those are traditional lectures. Um, you will have, you, you'll select a number of modules to do. Um, you're given uh, domain-specific um, material in, in six topics, taught by world-leading experts, um, and assessed by a combination of coursework and, and exams. So it's very much as you will have done in your undergraduate times. The second block um, I want to talk about is the engineering design. This is a, a group work piece of uh of exercise, and the idea here is we 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 set you into groups of around about four to six students, um, and you all work on a very large multidisciplinary project. So 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 the project has has a number of different facets to it, and they all need to fit together. And what will happen is within your teams, you will decide between you who is better at this, who's better at that, you know, who's most comfortable, who, who's the most appropriate. Um, Every week, you will meet with a um, with one of the academics, one of you know your design tutor. Um, and I, I'd like to point out these are highly accessible. We we do one of the one of the the aims, one of the ethos of of the Durham Engineering Department is to make the faculty members, the academics, your 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 lecturers, very accessible, very easy to talk to, and, and we're very willing to talk to you. Um, and so, so we meet once a week um, as a group with your tutor. You will typically meet another two times per week to discuss progress um, and, and to make sure that, that all your elements fit together. Um, and that one is assessed completely by, by coursework. Um, and so that happens at the start of the year. Finally, we have the top element, which is the dissertation project, which represents a third of your, of your marks. Um, and this one, I think, is one of the more exciting aspects of, of this project. Um, the, the dissertation project happened in two parts. Firstly, um, you will select 
an area, a research area that you find interesting. Um, you and another other students who've also found that group, that, that area interesting, will form a small research group. Um, and you will be led by, again, one of the academics. And this time, the academic has proposed that research area, so they really are um, a, a world expert in, in, in this field. Um, for the first term, for the first 10 weeks, you will be meeting as a group. And then in the second part of that, you'll be meeting one-on-one -on -one as you effectively turn into a full-time full -time researcher um, working on this research project, which ultimately you write up as a 10-page dissertation, um, which is examined both by reading it and by, a, by an oral, oral exam. Um, but you here have, have the ability to, to really work at, at, at that forefront of, of research. So if we think about the, um, the taught elements of the course, um, depending on which program you're going to take, so whether it's civil, electronic, electrical, et cetera, um, there are a number of core modules that you have to take. So in the case of civil and energy management at the two at the left and right extremes of, of, the, of the screen, you'll see that there, those, those choices are fixed. Effectively, you have no choice. We, for those programs, you need to do all those modules. For all the other ones, um, we have, um, you take five core modules and then the sixth module, um, you have free select uh, choice over. Now, currently uh, the choices are optimization and environmental engineering, but we are adding more modules to that. Um, so at the time of publication, these are the ones that are, that are available, but more are, more are coming. Um, and you'll see that, that you know, the, these are, um, these are highly relevant. Um, these are these are topical. The, the, these are, are ones that people are concerned about. So, for for example, you'll see that um, for electrical, renewable energy, mechanical, there are there's future um, vehicles. So that that really is about electrifying um, the transport options and looking at all sort of options. So it's not just electric uh, cars; it is electric everything. Um, okay, these modules are mostly delivered by lectures. So the traditional way of um, we have um, a lecturer up, up in, in the front, um, world expert in the, in the area, has prepared the material, delivers it, guides you through it, um, explains the, the ideas. Um, most of the teaching goes like uh, works like this. However, outside of the lectures, as I said, we aim to be as accessible as possible. So if you see us walking in the hallway, feel free to ask us a question. But equally, what we also do is we have office hours where we make ourselves available for anyone to come into the office and, and have a chat about, about the contents of the, of, the, uh, of the module. The design groups. Um, so as I said before, these are set up at groups, uh, with groups of four to six students. You're given a, a fairly open-ended problem to, to consider. Um, and the idea is that you will then go through the process of thinking about potential solutions um, and narrowing them down and making those solutions work. So, so, so as you as you go through the levels, you'll 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 think, okay, this is this is how we're going to structure the solution. Then a new new set of problems come along as as you start looking into that in more detail, and that that repeats until you get down to sufficiently fine grain. Um, you're guided by an academic tutor. Um, who helps you think about things. They're, they're not necessarily word-leading experts, but they are very good at, at guiding you through the process of, um, of doing the design, of approaching the design problem, okay? And so that, again, is, is, is assessed completely by coursework. You write um, a big report, you present your ideas, and that's how we, that's how we assess how well you, you've done that, that element. Um, the dissertation project, that I've, as I've already mentioned, you have the potential to work at the, at the forefront of knowledge. Um, and as evidence of how, how advanced some of that, this research happens is that every year, a number of students will have their work published along with their, their supervisor. Um, it's not something you must do. It's something that happens. You know, some research projects do deliver stuff that is publishable. Um, so, so it, it's not a, it, it's not part of the coursework that you need to publish. Um, it's also worth saying that 
not always the best projects, the highest marketing projects are the ones that get published. There are some projects that are just simply more suitable for being published, and quite often they, they do get published. Um, and so, so this is you know, this is sort of happens frequently, um, and it's you know, it's kind of one of the, the the exciting elements that you could potentially do that again if that's something you, you you you'd be keen to happen. You know, do discuss it with your with your future supervisors, and we'll see what happens. Um, in terms of how, how the year looks like, um, so Durham University still operates on a term system. Um, so the undergraduates experience three terms a year, so terms one, two, and three. Um, the taught MSc students, you in other words, um, your, pro your programs are 12 month programs, so you have a fourth term over the summer where you focus on your dissertation project. So terms one and two, are very much classic um, university style terms. Um, there's there's lots of teaching, there's seminars available. In term one, you'll be focusing primarily on your um, engineering design project. Term two, you're in, there's still a little bit of engineering design to be done. It, 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 the final write-up lasts for the first couple of weeks into the term, but really the big thing that starts happening there is that your dissertation project starts. Term three, um, which is the one we're about to enter, is different. Um, so the Durham system only holds um, written exams once per year, um, and they happen in term three. So all the material you've done in term one and term two will get examined at the end, um, in the second half of term three. So in the first half of term term three, there are some revision lectures. No new content is presented. It's sort of just, just a sort of reminder of, of, of the key aspects of, of the courses over um, three weeks, and then you move into the exam period. As soon as that's finished, you go back into your dissertation project, and that leads us into the summer term, where all you have to do is your dissertation project. So you are effectively acting as a 100% um, researcher working on, on, on your dissertation project along with your, along with your supervisor. So if we then break that down and we'll have a look at what a, what a a typical week looks like. So what I've done here is I've taken a um, uh, a timetable from the um, Advanced Mechanics uh, MSc. Um, the timetable, you know, it does change year per year. Obviously, depending on what program you do, that's going to change. But roughly speaking, this is what a this is what a uh, a timetable looks like. So you'll see the big the main things here are these blue boxes here. So these are your lectures. So those those are where you all you know, lots of people come into a lecture theater. You've got your, your academic at the front telling you things about friction or material machinery, um, delivering content. And you'll see that they're sort of spread around here um, across um, across the week. Um, the other next one you want to see is the design project. Now, admittedly, this, this, this does change um, year on year um, and quite exactly where this, this, this design project sits um, changes. Um, and equally, both the dissertation supervision. So, so that the, it, this sort of effectively a version of the start of the um, term term two um, lectures. Okay. Um, and so this is roughly what it looks like. You'll also see here I've got a research seminar. Um, so these are you know we are a research active department. Um, research seminars happen all the time. They're not compulsory, but if they're interesting, you're welcome to come along. Um, then spread through the through the week, there are a number of academic um, office hours. Again, these are by the lecturers. Um, we put on these office hours where effectively um, us academics are available for, for discussion. Um, we're in our offices. Come along, have a chat about any, any problems you, you, you might be encountering. The last thing I want to point out is this big um, golden area. Um, and, and this is something that, that that's particular to the UK. Um, Wednesday afternoons are kept free of any teaching activities. And the reason for that is, is primarily um, we encourage you to go and do something out of the department. Um, so whether that, that, that's sport or some other activity, but we, we've kept those Wednesday afternoons free for everyone. It was admittedly designed primarily around sport. And the idea is that all universities keep Wednesday afternoons free so that um, Universities can compete against each other, and they know 
that Wednesday afternoon, no one have any lectures and everyone, all the students are available um, to get together to do to to do competitive sports. Um, but of course, it's open. You know, there, there are other options. Um, so, for example, you'll see the solar car. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll mention that in, in a moment. But so these are examples of other things that that do happen um, and that we you will know that, that you're always available um, in these times. Speaking of which, that takes us to our solar car. Um, so again, this is not, while this is not based in the department or not not um, connected to the department, it's, it's based within the department because of course it, it relies on a lot of engineering equipment to, to build it. Um, but we get people from other departments coming along and helping out. So for example, um, we've got geographers helping out with the logistics. Um, we've got people from the business school helping out with um, getting sponsorship, um, etc. cetera. Um, admittedly, most people are engineering based because there is a large engineering element, element into it, but we welcome people from, from other disciplines to come along as well. Um, so this solar car, every other year, it races, we, we race it from uh, the north of Australia, Darwin to Adelaide in the south, the 3,000 kilometer race. Um, it's completely powered by the sun. Um, and the idea is to try and get from A to B as fast as possible. Um, more importantly, is just to get from A to B. Um, not everybody completes the, the course. Um, within the UK, we are the we are the fastest team. Um, it is very competitive. Um, the there are some other uh, teams that are funded far better than we are, um, and who benefit from that and do do even better than we do. However, for the level of funding that we get, um, we do perform very well, and that is primarily because of the level of engagement that the, the team members put into, into this activity. There are other races in the off the, the non-race years, if you like, so, so there are some local races um, that, that we will send the car to. Um, not now, because if you were able to see what the weather is like right now in the UK, it's not sunny. Um, so we will we will work on the car now, and it will race once the um, once we see the sun again, um, hopefully, which will happen in a couple of months. So, what happens after? Um, well, um, in terms of where people end up, um, most people do end up in engineering type careers. Um, you'll, so you'll recognise some of the the big um, names there. So there's Rolls Royce, there is Atkins, there's Jaguar Land, Land Rover. Um, but there are people who also go to non-engineering careers. So you'll see um, there are invest investment banks. So there, there's uh, Barclays. Um, there are there's Chase Manhattan, um, and you know other people go into civil service. Um, there are there are a lot of a lot of pathways that that are that are open to you. Um, you the, the skills that you you learn in an engineering degree are by and large very transferable you've done lots of an analytical work you've done lots of quantitative work um, and you've done lots of report writing at a very high level so so this makes a lot of career um, pathways open to you in terms of professional status um, this is still a work in progress for us so currently um, the renewable and sustainable energy is the only program that is currently um, accredited um, the other programs are very near to accreditation, um, and we are hoping that that will happen this year. Regardless of, of when it does happen, all people who have done the programs will be um, accredited um, in, re in, in, in retrospect. Um, so, so while the degree might not be accredited now, um, when it gets accredited next year, later this year, those degrees will be accredited, including the ones uh, graduates from previous years, their degrees will suddenly become magically accredited. Um, so in terms of, of professional status, the UK operates a, um, a self-regulating approach. So unlike in some other countries where doing an engineering degree, you get the title of engineer. That, that's not how it works in, in, in the UK. There's an independent um, uh, body who does that. Or we have num a number of independent bodies who do that. Um, in terms of international recognition, that's done on a country by country basis. So again, you know, depending on where you come from, you need you need to check up on that. 
So that's pretty much everything I, I need to say from the engineering um, background. So I'm now going to hand over to Catherine um, for her bit about life in Durham. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Pete. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Catherine Patterson. Um, I, I work in the central marketing team at the university and support the Faculty of Science with their marketing. So I'm just going to talk about what it's like to, to be in Durham, to live here and to study here. Um, so, Pete, if you can just click on the next slide for me, please. Brilliant. Thank you. So, yeah, as you can see there, um, we're a world top 100 university. So in the most recent QS World University rankings, we were ranked 78. Um, so you know, incredible to, to be part of that. Um, we operate in a collegiate system. So we have 17 distinctive different colleges um, throughout the city. So you live in your college, you, you study within the faculty, but you live within college and you have access to a wide range of um of facilities there. You know, we have study spaces, we have um social groups, sports clubs, um areas to eat, drink, all that kind of thing within each college. Some of the colleges um are all colleges have PG. Um, availability and we do have one college that is just for PG students so lots of um, different choices there in terms of colleges. We're England's third oldest university so we were founded in 1832 so within the next sort of 10 years we will be celebrating our 200th university so um, a very historic um, university in a very historic city as well. Um, we have students and staff from over 120 countries so we're very much a, a global community here at Durham, um, so you know, within college, within your departments, within the courses that you you're studying, you'll find lots of people from across the world um, studying and working with you. We've got lots of strong industrial links. I think that Pete touched on there. Some of the um, some of the organisations that students go on to work with, we have strong links with those, and that really helps with um, employability opportunities. Um, next slide. Brilliant. Okay, in terms of our location, so we are located in the northeast of England. Um, Durham itself is a is a very historic city, like I've said, and it's it's small. Yeah, it's very varied, so it's really easy to get around by foot or by public transport. But there's lots and lots going on, so there's lots of different cultural and sporting pursuits that you can take part in. There's also lots of places to um to meet up with friends, to eat, to drink, to, to get out and really enjoy what we have around the city. So you could be in the city centre in one minute, in the next five minutes, you could be walking along the countryside next to the river. So a lot going on and a lot of places to explore while you're here. Uh, but at the same time, we're really, really close to some, well, all of the, the major cities really across the UK. So if you wanted to go up to Newcastle, that's only 12 minutes by train. Um, down to London is three hours, up to Edinburgh is, is not even two hours, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. And if you're interested in going across to the other side of the country, we've got Manchester, which is about two and a half hours by train. And it's also worth noting that Durham is really, really close to Durham County Cricket Club, um, which tends to host some international cricket get, um, matches throughout the season. But there's always lots of going on, lots going on around there as well as other other opportunities across the city okay next slide i think brilliant okay so in terms of the city we've touched on it a little bit but it does offer world-class education and living um like i say it's small but it's also very very safe it's very beautiful and it's very historic so we are home to a world unesco heritage site so that forms the cathedral and the castle so durham castle is actually owned by the university and it is one of the colleges that you could live in while you were here and um, studying so lots to lots to take in lots to see um, and like I've already said, it's easily walkable all parts of the city within 30 minutes. So whether that's from accommodation to campus, from campus back into the city centre, you can get anywhere quite quickly. But we've also got a really good public transport network that will get you around by bus. Um, and we are surrounded by country, uh, countryside. So there is the river, excuse me, the river Weir that runs right around the city. And from there, there's lots and lots of open countryside, lots of places to visit in the local area as well got lots of castles and um, lots of places just to get out and really, really enjoy nature in the local area. Okay, next slide. Okay, Pete, if you can just click play, it should give us a bit of a video along the bottom. There should be a play feature. 
Lovely, thank you. Sure, the sound isn't working, but you should still be able to get a good idea. Sorry about that. Yeah, apologies, there wasn't any sound on that, but hopefully that just gives you a bit of an idea of what there is round and about where we are. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, we'll just talk about the support that's available to you. Yeah, brilliant. So like I've already touched on, there's so much to, to get involved in while you're here. And Pete's already talked about that time on a, a Wednesday afternoon when lots of students do a lot of extracurricular activities. So in terms of what they look like, we've got over 200 student societies to join and they cover everything from sport to theatre to music to cooking to exploring the city to museums. There's all sorts that you can get involved in there. And around 85% of our students are involved in sport, music, theatre or volunteering as part of that extracurricular um, offer that we have. Last year, we were also named Sports University of the Year 2023. So lots and lots to get involved in there. Um, we've got over 700 college sports teams across different 18 different sports. So each of those 17 colleges, it's got lots of different teams in there. So whether it's something that you already play or you're already involved in, or whether it's something that you knew that you want to try when you get here, there's different clubs and different teams for all levels of ability. So whether you're starting out or whether you're you know, semi-professional in something, we've got something that will help you there. And we've also got about 86 different music societies for you to try as well. And like I said, that's alongside all of those other opportunities around volunteering and theatre and just getting involved in the city and the local area. Um, and then final slide for me, I think, should be around, yeah, the support that we offer. So if we just move on to the next slide. We've got a range of different support that we offer, um, and that's both in terms of academic support and making sure that you get the most from your time here at Durham and look after you as a person as well. Um, so we we support you from before you get here, throughout your journey with us, throughout your study and, and following on as well. So we can help with immigration, and we can help with healthcare and accessing GP services once you're here. We can also provide um, information and support around finances and helping you with that. We've also got a really, really strong student wellbeing program. We've just launched a new student wellbeing hub as well. So student wellbeing and counselling is offered centrally through the university, but also within your colleges, you'll have access um, to support teams there too. We also offer chaplaincy and faith, so a range of different um, networks across the university. And we also have a really strong equality, diversity and inclusion team. there. So it, you know, whatever it is that you need help with while you're here, there is somebody that you can talk to at a local level within your college and also other teams that can help within the wider university and within departments as well. So you'll always there's always someone there that can help with whatever it is you need that help with. Um, and I think that's me. I think I'll pass over to Pooja now who can talk through the entry requirements. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks, Pete, uh, for covering the academic part and uh, I hope all of you are able to hear me. 
Yeah, we can hear you fine. Thanks, Patricia. Okay, thanks. Um, so I will be covering the part of entry requirements for Indian applicants. We do accept a three-year or four-year bachelor's degree from an approved Indian university with a minimum score of 60% uh, to 70% depending on various programs and the institution. Um, Indian applicants are also required to prove their English proficiency, which they can prove through a variety of English tests. Uh, the minimum IELTS scores that we require vary in between 6.5 to 7, uh, depending on the program that they wish to study. I also would like to stress that uh, we do have uh, English uh, language waivers available for students from India. And if you have any queries, you can get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for giving us this insightful presentation. <clears throat> now, time for Q&A session. I will help you call out the question from the YouTube chat box. So the first question is, what are the challenges in designing and implementing smart materials and structures in mechanical engineering system? Um, that is a remarkably detailed question. Um, I think I need just a little bit more information before I can help. And then I might also put in a disclaimer that I might not be the best person to, to, to answer because I'm not, I don't actually teach um, on the mechanical engineering one. So could you just, just repeat the question, please? Yeah, sure. What are the challenges in designing and implementing smart materials and structure in mechanical engineering system? Um, I can share the question on the uh, Zoom chat box also. I'm I'm going to actually check with my colleague Leon here. Um, have you are, are you any more familiar with this? Because I know you teach on on the mechanical um, MSc. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a technical question or a general question about uh, our postgraduate courses. I. Uh, it it seems to me that you're asking a technical question. I think in our um, MSc courses, we do have modules to cover materials and also structure engineering. So uh, from those modules, we will be able to learn how these things are, how the uh, current challenges and uh, what, what you can do about it. This is my answer. Yes, it, 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 it's a very, very broad question. I mean, part of my answer would be come along to the program and, and, uh, and find out what the challenges are. So we will move on to the next question. Uh, what are the key areas of focus in the advanced mechanical engineering course and how do they prepare students for the career in the field? So a lot of mechanical engineering is, is considering about um, what happens within the mechanical system. So, so there is a degree of, of looking at, at the, the forces and stresses along in, in, in the um in 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 the, the the system that you're looking at. Um I think possibly what might be useful here is I'm going to try and bring us back to the set of modules that are involved. So if I just try and share this again. Um So we're looking at, at the mechanical one. So, so, so there, there, there's future vehicles. So that, that's obviously looking at the decarbonization, or specifically more likely the electrification of various vehicles, whether that's cars, trains, aircraft, um, renewable energy technologies. That's going to be largely in the generation aspects um, and the um, aerodynamic aspects of, of, of a lot of you know, wind turbines, that type of thing. Um, Nonlinear solid mechanics. Um, that is thinking about well, you've got a piece of you've got a, you've got a piece of, of, of equipment, a, a part. Is it going to break? Um, so, so you know that is um, you know how how hard can you can you treat it if you if you like, um, and, and understanding you know what's happening at, at a material level with within that um, fluid mechanics. That is all about um, the um, 
And I've got to be careful here because the Leon is, is the expert in this. So I'm going to try and, and say, say this. Anyhow, it, it's about understanding uh, the uh, energies within fluid systems, whether that, that's compressible or incompressible, and how you can extract work from, from that. Um, Turbo machinery and propulsion, well, that really is a, is a continuation, um, and that, that is definitely into much more uh, aeronautical. So now you're dealing with compressible fluids, and here you are very much interested in extracting work or creating work. So that's either um, extracting work within a turbine or creating work um, by you know, using um, by pushing um, a fluid out. Um, so I think I'm, I'm hoping that that answers your question. I, I realize I've just I've just rattled through the um, the module outlines or the module titles. If you want more details, I would recommend that you have a look at the at the postgraduate handbook, um, and you can Google that um, for Durham, and that will give you the detailed content that each of these modules provides. Okay, so next question is, can you discuss the role of biomechanics in the design of prosthetics and orthopedic implants? What I'm going to say here is that, yes, we do cover that. Um, so, so that is looking at, um, um, we here in the artificial organs module, we do look at, at prosthetics, both sort of limbs and also internal organs. So, for example, mechanical hearts. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because that 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 is the that's the extreme of, of my knowledge on on this. Again, I would refer to you to the um, postgraduate handbook, and perhaps Catherine, maybe if you've got a moment, maybe you could just Google the um, engineering MSc links to those to those. We'll share a link for the biomedical engineering program. Well, yeah. if you do Thank for you. all all programs, there, there there's there's a page that list has links to all the the programs that I, that might that might be quite useful for for everyone. Thanks. Okay, right, so next covered, question. So, uh, I have all covered all the questions from the okay. YouTube chat box. Thank Perfect. you for answering all the questions so well. Do you want to share any final words? Um, any further questions, um, feel free to email us. Um, and again, um, Catherine, you can, can share the, the email. There are a number of ways of doing it. Um, you, know, you can either, the, the best one is to email the um, engineering admissions, um, and we can get that, that email address that, um, out to you. Um, or there is also um, ask a question, and, and eventually the question does make it, its way um, to us in engineering, specifically for technical aspects on the on the course. If, it, if it's more about the admissions process, then um, the admissions office is the best place to, to, to um, get in touch with. Thank you so much, everyone, for your valuable time. All the audience, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the SIUK India office. For more updates, do follow us on our social media handles. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye now. Bye-bye. Are we, are we finishing here as well? I believe so. We're still recording? We uh, Yes, we are recording and we are still live on YouTube for, for okay. like one minute and then we can coordinate if you wish to. Okay. Also, I will share these email IDs on the YouTube chat box for the students. Thank you. To contact directly with you. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to um, log out as well then. Thank you. Thank you so much.